Today you find me in my study, and I am trying to pack up and get ready to do many things since I will be traveling next week. So you catch me in my old work clothes, my in my purple sweatshirt or t-shirt and my turquoise sweatshirt that I wear around the house at home. This is my study. This is my corner where I write uh, articles to be published and also where I write my stories, which I'm working on. Today, our focus is going to be on research. We are going to be focusing in on creating resource cards. We'll take a look at the Purdue OWL or online writing lab and we're going to be discussing what constitutes a quality resource. We're going to start with the Purdue OWL or the Purdue online writing lab. You will find a link to it in this week's lesson. It is a an open source open license resource provided by the Purdue University for writers and students everywhere. It gives the basics of MLA, APA, and Chicago style, and I believe also Turabian. I am trying to remember that, whether or not that does include it. And it is a valuable resource for those of us who don't have the money to get a new style guide every year because they keep it updated. It has the most recent trends and the correct way to manage your entries into a paper or to create a public speech which has internal references. Um, Research cards are something that I sort of developed on my own. To create a research card, you will use a simple 3 by 5 card, similar to this one, if I can get it lined up here at the camera, which, on which you can take notes. When you access a resource, a book, a website, a magazine, the first thing you need to do is write down the publication information about that source. That should be the author, the um, title, the magazine title, or the name of the website, the date it was published, and the day that you accessed it, and from where. Why should you write all that information down? so you can find it later. When I was contemplating graduate school, the library where I was working paid for a children's literature class. I love Kitty Lit. It is my favorite. I read a lot of young adult novels and a lot of my reading falls into that category. There's some great stuff in the young adult section. A lot of heavy insights into social media, social issues, um, that whole growing up, coming of age kind of genre of literature. It's all in there and it's a great place to work through and a lot of good information is, is, made, is in that area. So I enjoy it. And I was ecstatic. I was working in the children's department in those days as a uh, children's associate. And I have always read children's literature. I had three children at home. And I felt I was pretty well versed in children's literature. But I enjoyed that class so much. And one of the things that I needed to do was to write a formal term paper, something that, interestingly enough, I had not done up until that time, although I had done a lot of writing. And one of the things we had to do was to make an annotated bibliography. Now, I'm not going to ask you to annotate your bibs. 
uh, an annotated bibliography is one that tells something about the resource as you go along. In a very strong sense of the word, your research cards that I'm asking you to make are annotated bib entries. So I collected my resources. I was writing about Louisa May Alcott, one of my favorite uh, children's authors and daughter of one of the transcendentalists, um, Bronson Alcott. And I wanted to write about his relationship with his daughter and how his influence directed and focused her writing down through the ages. So I, oh, there was a ton of information, including uh, the library had a set of Bronson Alcott's diaries. I was able to get things through interlibrary loan. I was in heaven. I was having a great time. I was reading and taking notes and marking books. And I wrote my paper and made my list. And I took it in. And my instructor said, well, this is all very well and good. You've got this list over here, um, but how does it connect up to your paper? And you've got a quotation here that you're not showing any source for. So I had to go back through all those 30 or 40 odd different sources I had collected and try to find my quotation my references, my footnotes, and make those connections. And I hadn't taken adequate notes. I had no idea where I got some of that information. So I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to show you how to avoid being that student that has to go back through 40 some odd different pieces of literature, even two or three, and make those notes. So the first thing that you need to do before you ever take down a note is either print out the whole entire article along with the information that has the title, the author, the date of publication, and the publishing company. Or you can take your handy dandy little 3x5 card and you can take notes directly on it. And when you start out, you head up the top of your list with the title of the article. Let's say, for example, that I want to reference our textbook. I would head it up something like this. Sorry, I don't write that fast. And so it would look something like this. They're focused up there. Public Speaking Handbook. And then I would write down the page number where I'm taking information from, the chapter, and possibly then the information to follow. And that way I can go back, I can find it, I don't have to hunt it, and then I can do something else. I can take my cards that I have developed and I can spread them around in front of me and I can shift them from one place to another so that I can organize the information to create the body of my speech before I ever start writing. Now, do you want to take the information directly off those cards? No. These are not speaking cards. Your research cards are pieces of information that you've collected that you have available to you to make your speech. If you are in the habit of working electronically, you will find in the resources area of our Moodle um, tool a um, template 
into which you can type your information. If that works better for you than having to hand write a bunch of three by five cards, go for it. I'm fine with it. You can print them out, you can cut them apart, you can use them directly off the sheets. I'm not really picky about that, but I am telling you, if you will do it my way, you will save yourself a tremendous amount of work. This is the point of doing it this way. Let's see, do we have anything else on here that we need? Ah, yes, selecting quality resources. We talked a little bit about this last week. We discussed that edu, go, dot, dot edu, dot gov, are by and large more reliable sources than some of the others. You can find good information, though, from dot com resources or from dot org resources, you simply have to watch the bias of the person that is doing the speaking because, after all, if someone is trying to sell you a product or trying to get you to join their organization, they're going to slant the information. Now, as it happens, believe it or not, you can find slanted information on .govs and on .edus. They are not immune to it. It's just that overall, as a rule, that information is more professional and is more carefully presented. Another way that you can get good information is through using LIRN, L-I-R-N, our Library Information and Resources Network, which is paid for by the school. And I would highly recommend it. The reason it is a better resource than many that you're going to find is because the information in that particular resource is peer-reviewed. And what we mean by peer-reviewed is that someone who has a professional degree or training or background that will suit them to be a person who can truly critique that material has reviewed it. And usually more than one someone. Does that mean that they are absolutely free of error? No, unfortunately not. And we are human and editors do miss things and sometimes people have different opinions. Ah, oh, there's a kitty. Hi, sweetie. Uh, this is Blaze. And therefore, you you cannot say that any one resource is absolutely 100% reliable. So your best method is to gather two or three resources and compare them and see what they agree on, see what they disagree on. You can even present these opposing views if it's a sufficiently um, complex topic. Books are usually good sources, but not absolutely at 100% every time because they are not all peer-reviewed. Journals, professional journals, by and large, are excellent because they are peer-reviewed and they do go through an editorial process. Books that are published on Amazon, by the way, do not fall under the heading necessarily of good resources. And that is because Amazon has a very open policy towards publication on their platform. And you will get people who are putting out their information that is assembled very quickly uh, with an eye towards making some money. And it is not particularly great. So you need to double check the authors who publish if you get an electronic book from a source like Amazon and make sure that um, and they actually that author does have the background needed to produce the kind of information that uh, makes a good solid resource. There's a lot of wrinkles. I used to not have to say that to students. That's a new one. Other good sources include professional experts and uh, researchers. People who work in the field, who uh, deal with the information that you are going to be using every day, are good resources, and you can use them and quote them in your speeches. 
basically. Um, hey girl. Ah, she's gonna be shy on us here. It's my baby. So anyway, back to uh, resources and references. This is going to be our main focus this week, is um, working towards developing these cards and knowing how to uh, do them. We'll also be presenting your declamation speeches. I'm looking forward to those. I hope we've got a lot of good ones. And we'll spend the early part of this particular class time working on those. Looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Catch you later.